now I have exported the textures uh, textures from the graph like this in 4k resolution now I will create a simple geometry uh, for this shapes I use modo for this kind of 3d geometry creation so first I will add a plane and for that plane I will just add a material or procedural console all right and I will drag and drop the ambient occlusion channel map to the material channel so in the UV viewport I will adjust the shape of this texture actually for that I will switch to the texture view actually I need to do that in 3d view here and you see that now I can just crop the tech, uh, 3d object in the way I want so let me just slice here and here by adjusting the texture through to the uh, adjusting the slicing approach according to the texture so let's make it in axis slice to make it more convenient at the end so this will be the end point of this part so let's make it once more this area to cut the shape from here since we are not using all the UV area it's better to cut the shape instead of adjusting the UV there because this way we will be having the proper aspect ratio on the final result all right so one last slice on x-axis like this and I will just remove the outer boundary of this surface so we are having this as the general projection of our 3d object but since we need to have the bottom part of this object let me show you the exact object from which I made in the CAD modeling software we also have a conical area at the bottom so let's copy this plane and paste again I will hide the previous one I will flip the normals and my next step we will be creating simple bevel for this object to make the bottom part of this shape all right so this is the different material which should be named as procedural console bottom we can apply a simple black material here doesn't look so it won't be seen so much so I'm unhiding the previous one it should act like the general object so first let me hide this one again and let me select the edges this one
make a smooth beveling for one last time since we are not seeing the detail so much so i just added a rounded bevel to make the bottom part in a rounded way so let's unhide everything so this makes the 3d object which we need so let's save it in a folder let's see so this is the procedural console and also I will export this plane as an FPX file as procedural console again So this will be an opportunity for us to compare the CAD model and the exact plane that we have made. So these are the textures and I will switch to the, <clears throat> the simple geometry and import it to the same scene, which is the procedural console here. Possibly I drag and drop the um, mode of file. Let me see. The FBX should work. All right. We have a large size for a starter. Let me remove the unnecessary details. And from the transform, let's scale to match the scale of these two objects. We have some um, wrong aspect ratio, but actually it doesn't matter so much because we did it procedurally without any measurement all right so this is the procedural copy that we are inspired by the first shape so my next step will be adding the texture so we have two materials procedural for the procedural map so let's add the details as we go so for the starter the p and triangles may not be sufficient for creating this uh, details with displacement map actually i forgot to subdivide this part this surface because we need details on the extrusion the best way to do that let me create a copy first and for the second plane I will just select the top plane because rest uh, is not needed to be subdivided so I will use an axis slice on the shape actually we can subdivide it by ourselves selecting this and shift and d subdivides the geometry the 1025 polygons looks okay so let's export this layer once again so 
once we export it, it will already updated on the Marmoset 2 back. So I added PN triangles, but before if I don't add it, you can see the wireframe once I click the shape. So first I will add PN triangles to subdivide the more uh, mesh for more detail. And next I will drag and drop the textures. So let's use an albedo. I will use height map for displacement. So we have normal map. I will assign the roughness to gloss map and I will switch this to gloss actually and switch the specular to metallic. And one final detail will be adding occlusion map and apply assign the ambient occlusion to that channel to get some detail. All right. Now you see that we are having wrong amount of extrusion. First I will increase the tessellation to get smoother results. My next step will be changing the scale and also changing the scale center to minimum level. All right. So we have metallic channel, albedo looks all right. Normal map looks normal. We got the occlusion map like this. And you see that we have similar forms already. But since the colors on the wood and some shading problems, because the extrusion uh, makes it linear on the surface uh, reflections we may just add some local reflections and we can enable the gi and also the ambient occlusion to make a better shading on our object so you can check the details to be close enough with the camera. You can see the resemblance between the cartridge ports and the eject buttons like this. We have some color mistakes at final stage and also some levels are not looking right but we got almost a detailed object as much as we can do similar to a CAD model actually which is a very valuable thing if you ask me so actually getting uh, more detail from this model is possible by rendering it on a classical render engines not a, a real-time engine like what marmoset toolback does actually lowering the roughness value works much better by the way also i will change the color of this wood to match with this one i switch to the designer once again And from the this part, I will select this and add an HSL to connect it. So from here, I will drop the lightness a little bit to change the separation down. 
Let me see. Maybe we don't need to change the saturation. Even we can increase it, I suppose. Much better. Looks better. So let's re export all the outputs. And switch back to Marmoset. Right, that looks much better right now. So we have two consoles, which is pure polygon, and the other one is just simple plane over a simple geometry on the next video i will on the next section actually i will show you the actual render uh, with the uh, displacement map on the octane render in modo to show the details we can get now you see that i just imported the actually just use the same uh, simple mesh with the textures in octane render with a uh, template scene which i made earlier to show product visualizations so now i will adjust the height displacement of this object i'm changing the to 4k resolution actually and you remember that we have used the 20 units of tessellation in substance designer it mostly matches with the height value of the octane render before point if i make it right like point 20 it will match the extrusion distance on the substance designer so this way now i have the 3d model once again but this time except uh, on the contrary of the marmoset toolbacks or uh, substance designers uh, real-time rendering we will be having reflections on the front surface as well because the calculations on this kind of engines made by first creating the 3d geometry and calculating all the material properties afterwards so let me adjust the reflections first the roughness channel all right and now you you can see the details on the object this way let me hide the inactive meshes and you see that we are having All the details we created so far so even close-up renders is possible you see that we have some crispy edges but it can be altered by extracting higher resolution textures or just subdividing mesh once more get rid of that also one other way is just use a displacement blurring within octane render so it can smooth out the results like this way so it depends on the resolution of the polygon count on the mesh and the resolution of the texture you are having uh, since the load on the calculation in substance designer is not so much we can export this um, console in 8k texture as well so in this case we will be having more details on the 
um, grainy plastic or any other details at the end but still it looks great actually so let me decrease the roughness value a little bit more to show you the front surface reflections which are applied on the roughness part and let's drop the value of this to zero you can see the reflections on the front surface as well so let's make it like this we have some seam problems because uh, once we corrected the uh, taperness on the wooden part at the bottom uh, we forgot to just match the textures of this uh, wooden parts so since we are in a procedural world we can easily just correct and re-export all the textures then uh, get the correct renders anytime so let me open the Marmoset toolback version as well and also I will just switch to the Substance Designer but this time I will export the 8K resolution as well first for better viewport experience I will drop the texture resolution to 2K and from the materials I will switch to the tessellation I'm increasing the tessellation factor and add the scale to 20 now adding the mesh as the plane high res so at this part I will just check corners these textures because we have wrong results at this part which possibly caused by the centering this texture here since these corners are matches we need to change the aspect ratio of this texture so let's make it a little bit from this part as well and let's check the top part once more all right now it looks good let's switch to 8k resolution I'm curious that it will, my uh, computer's memory will take it. So making it in 8K just took a bit of time. So let's switch to the 4K. And now I will re-export all the outputs. Let's see the 
texture update in toolbag first. Right, I think we are having too much of ambient occlusion at this area, which doesn't look good. The end. So maybe our wood texture is dark, too dark at this area as well. Let me just move this texture to the brighter area to show on this bottom part. Because the darker parts look a little bit of weird since we are having a very narrow area as well. So I will just move this texture to a brighter part. So let's save it and re-export once more. All right, we have brighter texture this time. So the local reflections makes it a little bit weird. All right. And we have now a better similarity on the wooden part as well, as you see. So if we switch to the fast view mode, it switches to the parallax mode, which we don't like, actually. But this way, it looks better. We can change the orange as well, because it looks a little bit weird. Two. Let me make it from here. And also, this is the part which is cool about the procedural texturing. Let me see the result. Check with the one, the original. Looks like more like brown. I'm having hard time to find the correct color, but this looks okay for now. So I will export outputs once more. Done. Let's close the Substance Designer. We have the Marmoset toolback version, which looks very detailed as well. So we have good reflections also, but this extrusion makes it a little bit weird unless you are looking from top to the object, which is good as well. Let's close it too. And let's accept the texture changes in modo and reload the scene with 
which is now okay on the seams of this wood and you see that we got very detailed object even many people can recognize that it is not modeled just displaced just created with displacement maps see that still we are having nice wood and button details even we have very tiny threshold on the vertical surface at these areas but still good enough on the object let's check the cartridge part which looks also good and we have some crisp results these are can be prevented by using a smooth or blur uh, nodes on the substance designer because uh, don't do any height map detail without blurring even tiny uh, amount of blurring makes it more smooth and also nice on the micro polygon displacement so we have this object finalized almost look like a very similar to the 3d modeled one thanks for watching